there is a real risk that you will trigger an outbreak that you may not be able to control. The government of the Sovereign Order of Malta, together with the London-based think tank Forward Thinking, has recently launched this very original project, Doctors to Doctors. We have seen countries use public health measures, the fundamentals of public health and epidemiology and clinical care, to bring the virus under control. See a time beyond, but also to be planning already about how we'll make this world a better place. Here at the World Health Organization in Geneva, the Director General opened the press conference with a minute of silence to remember those that had been slain in their daily work to serve and save lives. Thank you. Many healthcare workers, particularly doctors, are working in dangerous, often life threatening conditions like here in Gaza. To contribute to the United Nations actions against COVID 19, the Order of Malta took actions, addressing doctors, especially in the Middle East. The government of the Sovereign Order of Malta, together with the London-based think tank Forward Thinking, has recently launched this very original project, Doctors to Doctors, with the aim to gather on a virtual platform health experts, enabling them to share knowledge and promote a better understanding of best practices, protocols, and strategies to adopt in order to contain and control the coronavirus infection among populations. The project is intended to help countries which are enduring occupation, political unrest, economic challenges, ongoing conflicts, or the ex effects of crisis in neighboring countries to deal with the pandemic. Just as many countries easing off their restrictions, the World Health Organization calls for discretion. To protect lives and livelihoods, a slow, steady lifting of lockdowns is key to both stimulating economies while also keeping a vigilant eye on the virus. In the U.S., during this Senate Health Committee hearing, the most disputed doctor in the country expressed his concerns that checkpoints in existing guidelines are disregarded only to quickly get the country back to a form of normality. Because I feel if that occurs, there is a real risk that you will trigger an outbreak that you may not be able to control, which in fact, paradoxically, will set you back, not only leading to some suffering and death that could be avoided, but could even set you back on the road to trying to get economic recovery because it would almost turn the clock back rather than going forward. Health expert Monsignor Robert Vitillo reminds Christians to care for and respect others, and he reflects on the protection's impact on others. At the same time, they're protecting ourselves. And yes, indeed, this is a way of, uh, of uh, abiding by and obeying uh, Jesus' commandment, uh, the second greatest commandment, as he told us, which is to love your neighbor, but he also said, as yourself. As of May 16th, border crossings between Germany, Austria and Switzerland were made somewhat easier again. Uh, we uh, verbinden this with the uh, clear Zielsetzung, that we then ab Mitte Juni the uh, freien Reiseverkehr in Europa wieder wollen and uh, das auch anstreben. Das setzt voraus, uh, dass es beim Infektionsgeschehen so günstig weiterläuft, uh, wie wir das in diesen Tagen erleben dürfen. And I think a lot of countries now are looking at risk and response equalization. They're looking at other countries and saying, is the risk of disease in your country similar to mine? And is your response comprehensive like mine? So if we exchange citizens or tourists, there's no real difference. If a person from a, a country that's managing risk well and managing response well can move between countries, then you're not adding any extra risk by moving your citizens between the countries. We have seen countries use public health measures, the fundamentals of public health and epidemiology and clinical care, to bring the virus under control. Pope Francis has demonstrated true leadership during the COVID-19 crisis as he focuses a lot on faith and on prayer. Prayer, 
a spiritual weapon in the fight against the virus. There have been studies that have, been, that have proven that when we pray for people who are sick, even if we don't know those people directly, they often have less time in hospital, recovering from operations and other situations. So prayer is effective, and it certainly can be affected in this time of COVID-19. Finally, he encourages us to be people of hope, uh, to see a time beyond but also to be planning already about how we'll make this world a better place, one where we have a closer relationship to God, with nature, and with ourselves.